What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be mounting my Kirky seat. This is a universal rail with a slider, and then I have these Kirky mounts, which are gonna mount onto the actual seat, which will allow us to mount this to the slider. So we can slide the Kirky seat forward and back. I don't wanna have a dedicated seat that's in a fixed position. I wanna be able to slide it and have flexibility because this seat is extremely lightweight. That's why I got it. So let's get the things we need. I'm actually very, very disappointed in these Milwaukee drill bits. They didn't last very long. They're all faded, don't work very well. So we're gonna try our best. Also still working on the nitrous stuff. We'll get into that a little later. So hardware to use for now. Okay, so I ran into a little issue where the seat is a little wider than the sliders. So I kind of adjusted the seat to where I want them, uh, slid them as wide as possible to try to make it work. The Kirky seat brackets, they go like this, with this coming out, so that way you can access the mounting bolts. But I kind of marked it both ways as far as reversed so I have one hole there or it'll also work there but I can't run it like that because it sits out way too far when the seats in like it sits out like right here one bracket would be perfect but then on the other side it would stick out like that far out so my next option is to just work with what I got and then just basically flip them it's gonna line up exactly the same way this is the other side obviously but using those same holes plenty of room to get down here with a wrench and bolt the slider down. It's gonna take a couple tries, but I love how it's universal. It has holes everywhere, so if I had it here, which we are gonna drill there first, we can angle the seat any way we like. This is basically angle it backwards. So that's how far back the seat's gonna angle, and then we'll go in and make it straighter.
so I have the seat on the scale completely off the ground nothing's touching it 29 pounds not as light as I wanted but way better than the bride setup but I'm still happy I'm able to use a slider and a universal mount and basically have everything with the seat cover be under 30 pounds it's not bad for a street car if it was a dedicated race car it would be fixed maybe with a tubular bracket and then the seat and that's it no slider the slider ended up being the heaviest out of everything uh, the bracket wasn't even that heavy compared to that one when I ended up taking off the slider. It's not too heavy, not too bad. Now let's get this installed, the car. Like I said, now this is about the same. You guys can hear it. Very, very light. The only thing that's heavy is these things. These things are a tank. These things are heavy. We gotta get another Kirky. Kirky seat is mounted overall. I'm happy with it. One thing I did notice was that I had to put it a lot more forward than like my bride seat. And uh, I gotta change the hardware that I have. The hardware isn't ideal, but even though I can't feel it when I sit in it, but I do wanna get you know the proper hardware and actually find the best position for me as far as the angle. It does have a slider so I can slide it forward and backward, but I'm talking about the angle of the seat because you don't want to be too straightforward. I mean, when you're racing, yes, but you know, as a street car, I kind of want to have it slanted a hair because it's not comfortable driving in a straight upward position the whole time and slide it back. So that's good to have getting out the car in and out easily without taking the steering wheel off, but you can take the steering wheel off if you wanted to to help yourself a little better. Overall, I like it. I shaped a lot of weight with this seat. It's nice and sturdy. I do have to make a back support so Joanna actually has a harness bar that she was going to put on her EK. Now it's a drag car, she has a full roll cage and she has a dedicated bracket for that extra support. But here's the support. One of the brackets is attached to the roll cage and then this is the other bracket attached to her seat and she's still able to adjust it. You have that option with the quick release. This setup is actually really, really nice. So I'm probably gonna have something like this made for myself. That way I could detach it, slide the seat forward or back easily. So this is hers. She also has all her spare parts. Her car's actually at paint right now. And then we're gonna send this engine out to get fully built, which she has everything. She has absolutely everything. Cams, springs, retainers, valves, piston rings, gaskets, oil pump. She's got the drag cartel elite cams. It's gonna be crazy. Take some space instead of having the turbo kit just thrown around. Also her fuel tank here because she's going to run a FCS fuel cell. This thing's sick. Anyways. That's it for the Kirky mount. Now the seat's there. I do have to get a passenger seat. And then when I get the passenger seat, just do the same process again. I have a 16 inch Kirky, which is, you know, pretty slim. So I'm going to probably get a 18 inch or maybe 19 inch for the passenger seat. That way there's no limit on who I can give rides to. But yeah, I got to hook up some more nitrous stuff. And call it a day. Just got to run this hose. I'm thinking of running it here since this is a good, good spot. It already has a hole through the floor. Or make my life easy and just go straight down into here. I don't know. It's something I gotta think about before I drill. It's a one-time shot. All right, we made it back home, guys. And the car is almost complete. As of yesterday, which is not the day I filmed this video, uh, we got a lot of the wiring stuff done. So we have a lot going on. We have like two fuse panels, one for the rear, one for the front. The front one's gonna have the relays and terminals and 12 volt source, ground source. 
the ECU, the wideband controller, the CAN hub. It has a lot. So it took a little bit to get everything situated with the mount, with the wiring, and making sure we have all the new inputs, all the nitrous, all the new pressure sensors, the temperature sensors, all wired into the ECU and panel, which I will show you guys. Um, I'm gonna post it on my main channel, but that video is gonna have a entire nitrous and Haltech install, how I did everything. And honestly, I'm gonna be doing more videos on the individual products, like I mentioned before, the nitrous bottle opener, the heater, you know, the install, stuff like that. So those are things that I will cover. I know a lot of you are asking, where's the videos? They're coming. I have a lot going on. The car is not the only thing I do. I don't mess with the car every day. There's a lot of things I have to do day to day. I do run a business by myself, so it is tough. I have to keep up with orders and things like that. So it pushes a lot of the time away from the car. So I only been working on the car on weekends only because during the week, I'm just super, super busy handling a lot of different stuff. But I do appreciate you guys watching the videos. I know a lot of the videos aren't fun, but this is part of the process of building a car. Uh, the car has been through many, many changes. And this is by far one of the major changes because we are changing the entire harness on the car, switching to a new ECU which is super powerful. This is by far the most advanced computer I've ever owned and I am learning so much off of this so that's why I want to educate myself first so then I can educate you on the videos that way you guys can look at the product and know what I'm talking about and know how to do it yourself in case you do have similar ECU or even the Haltech. So that's why it's taking so long you know I even have software pulled up here on my laptop because I am learning this entire software the ins, the outs, and I'm working with my tuner right now to kind of get everything set up as far as where the inputs are gonna go, how to set up those inputs. So I'll be you know, showing you guys how to do that as well. This software is super easy. Um, my computer isn't the greatest, but if we go look at the wiring reports, everything is already set, everything's already wired. So you can kind of see here, more or less, my inputs where I have everything to. These are the analog voltage inputs. This is pretty much where it's gonna be like pressure sensors, temperature sensors and stuff like that. And here you can see all the ones that I've added. I really can't see because it's like backwards on my monitor. But we added the oil pressure, oil temperature, coolant pressure, coolant temperature, fuel pressure, some of the nitrous stuff. It's a lot of stuff in here and this is where it's tapped into my ECU. There's also more stuff, more inputs you can use. I have different things like the flex fuel here. I have my vehicle speed sensor because we are gonna run traction control on the Integra. So I'm working on getting those sensors and the brackets and stuff so I can set that up. As you know, the Integra does come with ABS, so I'm able to utilize the ABS position to use that sensor there so that way I can have traction control. It'll keep the wheel speeds the same. It's super dope technology, I'm super excited. I can't wait to even do a street pull on the street with you know street tires or you could call them like drag radios and just have traction control. That's pretty sick. So I'm excited about that. There's a lot, a lot of different things you can do with the ECU. So that's what I'm working on. All at the same time, like I said, while running the business, shipping orders, taking care of all the videos and editing and stuff like that, because I do have a bunch of projects lined up. I do have a lot of videos already done, but I haven't posted them yet because I want to get a overall full nitrous video uploaded first. Once I get that full nitrous video uploaded first, I go ahead and start throwing in all the other stuff. That's pretty much what's going on right now, but I do wanna ask you guys a question. So leave a comment down below. So I'm looking to get a powerful battery. My battery is pretty powerful, but the thing is, it's super tiny, it's compact, it's like this big. It's very, very small, but it's a lightweight, high cranking amp battery. I'm trying to get something that has a bigger capacity. Now that I have like a nitrous setup, bottle openers, you know, a couple different things, little LED lights and the high compression motor, you know, it kind of takes a lot to crank that engine. And I need something that's going to have more charge, like more capacity, uh, something larger, like an optimal battery or even an excess power or turbo smart. There's so many batteries out there, but I want to know, what do you run on your car? If you have a powerful street car, like I said, you know, something that's turbo, high compression, uh, someone who goes day to day without needing to charge it every two days. My battery currently I have to charge it every two days or if not, it's going to die. If I'm messing with the car and the car's not on, you know, like messing with the map, you know, whatever the case may be in the car's off, you know, the battery will die eventually because it's not a high capacity battery. So I'm trying to find something that's gonna work for me. Right now, my battery is located on the passenger side on the floor, close to the wall, but I do wanna mount it behind my bumper. Create a lot of weight up front, which is good for traction, but most importantly, it'll get it out of the way. I don't want it in the trunk area. I don't want it in the floorboard anymore. I wanna keep it there. That way I can just get straight to the alternator and then straight to the fuse box. Very, very simple, but I wanna get a battery that's gonna hold me down. 
and I want to know what you guys run on your cars. Even if you don't have a race car or a street car that's high powered, just let me know what battery you run on your regular car. I tried so many different battery setups, even like the affordable ones, like the AutoZone ones, like the gold one, the advanced one. I had a Odyssey battery, the real small one. That one didn't hold me down as much. It's almost similar to the one I have now, which is the Braille battery, 906 or seven cranking amps, but it's small capacity. So I want to get something that's powerful enough to support the car you know, throughout the week, throughout the month, you know, throughout the year, we don't have to charge it all the time. But I do leave the car on trickle charger. Maybe it's bad that I do do that every time I park the car for a long period of time. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. And again, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. I appreciate you guys' support. I appreciate everything, man, the love, the hate. And I appreciate you guys uh, throwing me your inputs on what I should do to the car. A lot of you are saying I should go turbo, I should do this, I should do that. But I'll make a video explaining why my car isn't boosted or a full drag car yet because you guys want to see the car go drag car you know but I'm, I'm a hardcore street guy so make another video on that but thank you guys for watching that's it for today if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe it is 100 percent free i make this content and we upload almost every other day on this channel i don't try to daily vlog because i have a lot going on but we'll probably get to that one of these days until then be sure to check out my other videos down below in case you missed one of them hope you guys have a great day see you guys in the next video peace